Hey guys, my name is Sarah. I live full time in my Airstream Caravel, and as much as I love it, there are definitely some things that I don't love about it. So today I'm gonna give you a list of all of my dislikes about my Airstream. You'll have to excuse my curly hair. I am currently practicing dry camping, which means no blow dryer. I am planning to hit the road here in just a few weeks. I'm actually going to be jobless in a few days, which is terrifying but thrilling at the same time. I figured now that my contract is ending, this is just the perfect time to get the Airstream out on the road. So I've been super stressed and busy preparing for this endeavor. So many emotions leaving California after being here for an entire year but I know it's time to spread my wings and get this baby on the road, so more to come on that. For now, let's focus on today's video, which is a list of all of my dislikes about my Airstream. I'm gonna start with the most iconic thing about Airstreams, which is the aluminum shell. Obviously, it's not just aluminum on the outside, it's aluminum on the inside as well. They definitely reflect everything, like if there's a light on at night, whether it be from my hotspot blinking or the battery light, it shines <laughs> and lights up the entire room. I don't feel comfortable drilling into these walls for any sort of reason. So it makes it a little more difficult to decorate. You have to use command strips or double-sided tape or Velcro and get creative with it. Also, the sound kind of bounces a little bit. Like, I don't know how this audio is sounding right now. I've done voiceovers where I just cover myself with a blanket because I don't want all of that echoing. But I do know the soundproofing from the outside is pretty good because I could have music blaring in here and then walk outside and barely hear it at all. There's definitely a chill to the aluminum walls when it's cold outside. You can touch it with your hand and it's freezing, so I can't really speak to the insulation of Airstreams. I haven't done any winter camping. I don't know how other campers are with this, but I do know from other videos that Airstreams are known to be a bit drafty. <laughs> Another big thing I dislike about my Airstream is the limited accessible storage. The only easily accessible storage I have is over my bed, in the kitchen, and my closet. If I need to store anything else, it has to go either in the dinette or underneath my bed, both of which are a pain to get to. I have to move the table and disassemble all the dinette cushions just to get to my vacuum, which is a total pain in the butt. If I need to get to something under my bed, I have to lift the platform up, which isn't that difficult as long as your dog isn't on it. <laughs> but a dislike I have about that is it messes up your bed sheets that are all tucked in nicely. Get down. Good girl. Thank you. Sometimes it stays, sometimes it doesn't. And then you have to make your dog move again so you can get to your things. <laughs> So I took this door off because I have a denning animal that loves to be underneath things. <laughs> this is where I keep my laundry. And then there's two bins back there. You can pull it out. You gotta turn it sideways in order to open it. And then I can get to my extra bed sheets. And then if I wanna get to that bin, I gotta take the laundry out to get to my hiking gear. And then you allow your dog back in, or she forces her way back in. Home sweet home. As far as storage in the closet, this used to be a big wide open shelf. I felt that the space wasn't being used efficiently. My pants were like the leaning tower of Pisa. So I decided to take some Luan plywood and make a shelf. No screws, no drilling, just some double-sided tape and some L brackets and voila. There used to be a very annoying little shelf in here that held the silverware organizer. I despise that thing because I knew there was a much better way to utilize this space. It's already so small and so limited that I just wanted that thing out. And it was the hardest thing ever to take out because there was like a bajillion pocket holes and I could not do it myself. So I called in the big guns and my friend helped me take it out with a 
L-shaped ratchet type bit. It was like almost an hour long process, but it was so worth it. As far as the kitchen goes, I wish I had more counter space. Now, this looks like a lot, but in reality, when I'm cooking, I also need to be using the sink. So normally this is gone. This is where I'm cooking. This is normally where I store things. But if I were to use this as counter space, it's a very awkward height as far as using it as a cutting board or anything like that. Or I could go over to the dinette, but that counter space is about here on me. And that's also an awkward angle to be cutting things. So honestly, I haven't cooked that much since I moved into my Airstream. I also don't like that the overhead bins are translucent. You can see whatever is in your cabinet right through them and they scratch super easily. When I was traveling, I got multiple scratches all over them, which was kind of a bummer because there's no way to get them out. And another thing is it's a pain in the butt. If you're over here and you're doing something and you need something that's just out of reach, you gotta do this and then do this just to get to it. It's also not very short person friendly. I am on my tiptoes right now and everything I store up here has to be in a bin because it dips down. So if I need to get one thing, I have to pull the whole bin out, get what I need, and then put it back in. Not only are the overhead bins not very short person friendly, but also the ceiling fans. I'm 5'1". This is me not on my tiptoes. This is me on my tiptoes. So I have to climb up on my dinette and become a monkey for a second to open it up. Another pet peeve of mine is I feel like the 22 foot model does not have enough windows. Now this is super contradicting because it appears that there are a ton of windows, right? There's really only one in the living room area. Normally there's a wall right here. I took the wall off recently to install some wallpaper on it. It's really brought a lot more natural light in here and I almost want to leave it that way, but I also like the idea of having the bedroom separated from the living room. So once I put those walls back up, it's gonna get a lot darker in here. And the only way to really bring more light in is to open up the front door and just keep the screen closed which isn't always an option if the weather is super cold or dusty or windy. So I really wish Airstream had put two windows right here and it would have brought so much more light in because the only other window in this area is the one above my sink. The windows are extremely hard to open. I will demonstrate, but it'll probably open super easily since I'm on video, right? wrong. <laughs> so in this situation, the dealership told me I need to break the seal on the outside with a key. That means I have to go around the entire parameter of the window with a key. And even that doesn't work most of the time. <laughs> even if it did work, I find it super annoying that I have to go outside and do all of that just to open my window. So I did come up with a resolution for this and it is a suction cup. A GoPro suction cup, but I'm sure any suction cup would do. The only unfortunate thing is I still have to go outside in order to do this. Voila! So much easier than using a key to break the seal. Another big pet peeve of mine is the front door. You have to slam this baby closed in order for it to seal properly. You cannot just shut it like this. Nope, that's not sealed. You can't do this. Nope, not sealed. You gotta like, if your toes were in the doorway, they would get cut off. Slam it hard. Bam. Guess who's waking up in the middle of the night if you get home late? your neighbors at the RV park or wherever you are. Even if you're dispersed camping, you might wake up your neighbors. <laughs> now, even when it is closed tight, I feel like it still wasn't sealed properly. I was getting a ton of bugs in here 
And so recently I went and added some extra weather stripping to the side. And even still, I get a lot of spiders in here right around the front door. Sometimes I'll get greeted by one just like hanging out when I walk in. Oh, goodness! Or like this area will be covered in webs. And also the ceiling fan always has spider webs on it. So I don't know if it's the front door or maybe my fan isn't sealed properly. That's probably it. I don't know, I'm gonna have to climb up there and find out. <laughs> Another thing that isn't sealed properly is the storage compartment in my headboard. And this is right above my outdoor storage compartment. So it lets in a ton of cold air when it's cold, hot air when it's hot, and moisture. I pulled one of my VAC Plus absorbers out of there and it was full of water after just a couple weeks. Another thing that concerns me is if I were to try to store a generator in there, I would get fumes from the gasoline in here. These are the curtains that came to separate that area of the trailer from the bed. I think they're hideous and they're very hard to replace because they're on a very specific track and these are permanently sewn into the curtains. So I found these pieces that go into the slider track. That part wasn't that hard but it was very hard to find a curtain that was compatible with them. And so what I ended up doing is getting a shower curtain. It has little notches cut out that's perfect for these little uh, slider pieces. I don't know what they're called. And the dimensions are perfect too. Not only is it perfect side to side, but also it only hangs about six inches off the floor and it doesn't get dirty. Okay, last thing we're gonna cover inside is the bathroom. Now this is the largest bathroom of all the bathrooms in the Bambi or the Caravelle. It's the 22 foot, you get your toilet, you got some cabinet space here, sink, nice big shower, not a wet bath. The sink though, I despise this thing. I find it so ugly. I wiped it down right before this video, so it's nice and clean now, but this thing gets dirty so quick. After like one use, I brush my teeth and there's water spots and toothpaste and grossness all over it. And also, it's very short. I'm 5'1", and this is how short the countertop is. They also put the toilet paper holder in a very inconvenient place, which was right there. So you gotta like reach for it. Uh, I ended up taking mine out and I put a new one right here. It's an adhesive toilet paper holder, but I took the adhesive off and I used command strips instead, just in case I ever want to remove it or move it somewhere else. Every single time I shower, there is a giant puddle on the floor when I'm done. I've tried what I feel is everything under the sun to fix this leaking. And it's not necessarily leaking, it's just that it's not sealed at the bottom. So I've given up. My process before I shower is I take my nice mat and I fold it like that. Open this on up. I have a towel here on the clothes hanger. That's where it lives. We put the towel right here. And that catches the majority of the water. And that's how the process goes. <laughs> okay, so that covers everything on the inside. Let's head outside. There's just a few things left and I'll tell you everything I don't like about the outside. So with the outdoor storage compartment, this is as big of a door as you get to fit things in and out. There is quite a bit of space in there, but even if something fits in this little door, you have this in the way. And I've purchased certain things that I thought would fit that did not. And this is your only option as far as outdoor storage. Okay, I lied. You have one more option for outdoor storage and that's your back bumper. You can fit quite a few items in here, but the downside is it gets very wet and it doesn't lock. So if you put anything valuable in here, you might want to install a lock. All right guys, I don't want this video to make it seem like I'm an Airstream hater because I certainly am not. Obviously because I live in one. I just feel like most of my videos have focused on the positives of living in an Airstream and I thought I should really take a moment to show you guys the negative things as well. Now that being said, a lot of these things were very nitpicky 
and honestly things that I should have considered when picking out a floor plan, but that's what I'm here to help you do. Everything is a matter of perspective. Moving into my Airstream was rough at first, but I have grown to love this lifestyle. Some of the biggest perks of owning an Airstream is that they hold their value very well. They are lightweight, so when it comes to choosing your tow vehicle, you have plenty of options. And for me personally, I'm glad I went with the 22 foot because not only is it a nice open floor plan, but I get a bigger bed out of it and the bathroom is on the opposite side. I almost went with the 20 foot, which would have given me a lot more counter space, but I think the sacrificial counter space is totally worth it to have this nice open floor plan. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you liked this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys next time.